Hi, I'm Danielle Smith with ExtraordinaryMommy.com, and today we are talking about volunteering in schools. This has recently become a bit of a hot topic because parents are doing a lot of it. They're doing more than ever, and in doing so, they're taking some time away from their families. Some are okay with it, some aren't. So we decided to talk to an expert. I have now with me Karen Vandeveris, and she is the founder of Volunteer Spot. Karen, thank you for chatting with me. Oh, thanks so much for having me, Danielle. I want to ask you first, why is it do you think that this is just one of those things that people are starting to talk about more? Because we've been volunteering, volunteering in schools forever. And we have been volunteering in schools forever, but I think two things have come to play. One is with the budget cuts across the nation, our schools need us more than ever. So instead of the parent just being needed at the class party once a year or the class field trip once a year, parents are filling the spaces where schools used to have aides and other paid employees. So we're supervising recess. We're supervising in the cafeteria. We're helping at math stations and science stations. And a lot of uh, parents are having to make the decision that if they want their children to have extracurricular activities such as art and music, that the parents have to pick it up. So I think um, we now have parents doing the job of what used to be paraprofessionals, and now um, that's also taking away from our work life and our family life, and it's it becomes a balance issue. So what does Volunteer Spot do to help sort of weed us through that process? Absolutely. So Volunteer Spot is a very simple online sign-up tool that lets any mom, any home or, or dad, any any volunteer, any homeroom mom, any committee chair, or if you're organizing li uh, library volunteers or cafeteria volunteers, you can quickly go online and invite other parents to sign up for, to help. So I know on Volunteer Spot, one of the other things you do, because for me, a challenge is I really want to be in the classroom. Uh, my kids are overjoyed when I am there. They're still little. I don't imagine they are always going to be that excited, so I want to try to take advantage of that as long as I can. But wow, it is a lot of work. So how would you suggest we try to balance that, that desire to help with our desire to not be completely overworked in a volunteer capacity? You know, I think what's really important is for each of us as parents to say, how much time do we have to give? And, and first, it's great that you're in the classroom, and our kids love seeing us at school. As parents, if we can find the time, even if it's once a semester to come into school, that shows our children, especially young kids, that education is important to us. Um, but be realistic about what you can do. Can you help once a month? You know, know that that's what you can do, and then talk to your room mom and your teacher and say, what's a good place for me to help once a month? Maybe that's a small commitment like reading to the class. If you can help once a week, Talk to your teacher about it, and maybe she has something else that, that she could use your help with, like maybe helping with the science station. But I think we have to have good dialogue around it and really set some limits. And then with Volunteer Spot, what we can do is you can ask more parents to participate. So you can break things down into much smaller pieces. So now I can have five people each helping one hour rather than having one mom help for five hours. And I think that's kind of a problem because I seem to notice that even in the schools, you have a lot of the same parents that are there all the time. They're the yeah. ones who are running huge committees and they move from one huge committee to another huge committee to room mom. And they, it seems like you're always getting the emails like, hey, who can help? Hey, who can help? And it's, it has to be, because I haven't had that, I haven't been on the receiving end of that experience. So it has to be really stressful. You know, I, I think it's stressful for both parties. I think, um, you know, and, and God bless those moms that take on all the big committees. Um, but you tend to hear com complaints from PTAs and PTOs that it's the same people doing the work all the time. And I was the mom, the new mom on the other side of that, the working mom, and my uh, BlackBerry kept getting filled up with who's, who can help, who can help, who can help. Uh, lots of reply all email. And if we can streamline how we ask for help, what we find is that more people will show up. So the challenge is if you are that, that um, PTA leader, more power to you and thank you and broaden your net. You know, make sure that we're asking as many parents as possible in a way that they can hear it and that we're asking for very small pieces of help um, so more people can get on board. And if you are the parent that's being asked, you know, you can be proactive. You can say, hey, at the beginning of the school year, here's the three things I'm going to help with. Um, I'm going to help in the library once a month. I'm going to help at the science fair. And you can count on me to bake cakes for the carnival. Um, and know ahead of time what you're doing, and then that takes the stress away. So when people ask you for, any, for to help in more ways, you can say, well, hey, here's the three ways I'm helping this year. And it can help contain that for those, of you, for those people that might not want to be more involved or might need to compartmentalize their school volunteering. 
I think you said something really important because I think that we do tend to see, like I was saying before, a lot of the same parents doing a lot of the same stuff. But the way that you have it set up on Volunteer Spot, you're basically saying, hey, we're going to open this up to everybody. And it's okay if you can only do one little thing. Like if it's, it's okay if you have a million other things going on and, and the, the one commitment you want to make is volunteering in the library once a month or it is spending the day at the science fair. But it allows parents to feel okay about that singular or multiple commitment as compared to feeling as though they have to be the room mom or the PTA president. And, you know, we get that feedback all the time from, from working parents and extra busy parents that tell us thank you. Because we just by making those, those broader asks, they feel like they can contribute. I mean, they want to contribute. Everybody wants to be in charge in, uh, and wants to be involved in their kids' education. And so, you know, if I have made it easy for a, a busy working mom that she can drop off, you know, some, some bagels or, or coffee cake for the teacher breakfast because she signed up and she was able to follow through, that makes her feel better about volunteering and it makes her feel better about the school and then later when the school is going to ask her to write a check she's going to feel better about writing that check for that fundraiser so getting people to participate is also really good business and fundraising for our schools the more parents that are that are touching our school in many different ways the more parents that are going to feel um, attached to our school and are going to support our schools of course now tell me with with you starting I mean, what was the motivation behind starting volunteer spot from your perspective Oh, it was complete pain. It was complete pain of being overwhelmed with refile email. Um, I kept hearing moms saying that it was always the same people involved. And then I kept talking to other working moms. I was working part time at, at the time that were saying that they, they said, hey, take me off the volunteer list because they couldn't handle the communication. So for me, that was really a big disconnect around people wanting to help, but communication getting in the way. And then I was also the Daisy, um, the Daisy leader for my daughter's Girl Scout troop. Mm -hmm. And I found that I was spending more time reminding parents of what they were bringing and asking parents to bring, be the snack parent than I was actually planning my activities with the girls. And that, that, that also didn't seem right. So I went to look for software to fix the problem, and there really wasn't anything so simple that anybody without any computer experience, I mean, we like to say if you can shop online, you can use Volunteer Spot. It's that easy to get started, and it's that easy to ask for help. For people that aren't familiar with Volunteer Spot, what is the process? Is it the school signs up? Is it an individual that signs up? Is it a Daisy Leader that signs up? Volunteer Spot is a tool for individuals to sign up and use. So whether you're the teacher, the homeroom mom, the Daisy Leader, if you're the mom that's organizing the soccer snacks, if you raised your hand and said, I'll do it, we've got your back. And so basically, we help you schedule people, um, have them sign up to, to bring things or to do things. Um, whether it's shifts or whether it's just bringing snacks. And then we send automated confirmation and reminder messages to help people keep their commitments. Now, at the same time, nonprofits use us for their walkathons. They use us to, to schedule their soup kitchens. They, they use us for very large fundraisers to coordinate folks. But we're really the tool that's so flexible. You can use us for a classroom of 20 kids to, you know, 300 volunteers that you're organizing for a big fun run. I love that you have gone about the process of making this whole thing that stresses so many people out so easy. Is there anything that I didn't ask you about that you'd like to add into the conversation we're having? I think it's really important that we appreciate all the volunteers that are working with our kids and are working with our communities. Whether it's the homeroom mom or the PTA mom that's leading the, the cafeteria volunteers, they're fitting this in in their already busy lives, and we need to understand that um, and really celebrate that fact. I really appreciate you sitting and talking with me. So thank you so much, Karen. It's volunteerspot.com, correct? That's correct. Hey, thanks so much, Danielle. Have a happy holiday. Thank you. You too.